The thyroid, what is it? Well, it's a small little butterfly-shaped gland located right at the front of your throat. It plays a big part in controlling your metabolism, and for some people, it can get a little bit out of whack. That's whack. Okay, getting out of whack isn't exactly a medical term, but hypothyroidism is, and it's just one of several conditions that can affect your thyroid gland. I asked my friends at the Cleveland Clinic to tell me a little more about hypothyroidism and just look at all this information they gave me. Today, I'm going to talk through it all with someone who actually has the condition, Katie from Love Sweat Fitness, and she's going to tell me everything about how she stays strong and fit when living with hypothyroidism. You'll want to stay and listen. It's good stuff. Yeah, man, that's the good stuff. I'm Tori, and this is The TMI Show. So the thyroid. This tiny little thing is responsible for keeping pretty much every metabolic process in your body functioning normally, like your heart, your bones, your body temperature, your weight, just to name a few. The thyroid creates the hormones T4 and T3. When it's on the up and up, it's constantly making and releasing hormones, then making new hormones to replace what's been used. The amount of thyroid hormones in the bloodstream is actually controlled by another gland entirely, the pituitary gland, this little guy located at the base of the brain. The pituitary gland produces its own hormone called thyroid stimulating hormone. Wow, creative name, or TSH. When it senses that your thyroid hormone levels are too low or too high, the pituitary gland releases TSH to, you guessed it, stimulate the thyroid to balance it all out. Hyperthyroidism happens when your thyroid levels are too high, making your metabolism speed up. It can cause your heart to race, make you sweat profusely, and feel exhausted. On the flip side, if you have hypothyroidism, your thyroid levels are too low. Not only does this slow your metabolism down, over time, it can cause weight gain, reproductive issues, and heart problems. Hypothyroidism is more common than hyperthyroidism. About five in 100 Americans have it, and most of them are women. So it's pretty important to know whether you have hypothyroidism and get treatment. But it can actually be difficult to diagnose because the symptoms can be easily confused with other conditions. And to talk a little more about that is Katie from Love Sweat Fitness. Well, hi, Katie. Thanks for stopping by the TMI show. Hi, Tori. It's so great to be here. First of all, how old were you when you were first diagnosed? And how did you know that something might be off? So I was diagnosed around 11 years old, which is actually really young for most people to be diagnosed from what I've heard. For me, um, it really started, I was having really severe headaches chronically almost every single day. My hair was falling out. My eyes were constantly like red and burning, um, along with other really fun stuff like constipation and mood swings and general fatigue. So as an 11 year old, as you can imagine, my parents were really concerned because those are just not things that you would find typical at that age. Like you were saying about the variety of symptoms, so many symptoms of hypothyroidism can be explained by other things. Was it easy to get a diagnosis? Not in my case. So we actually, I believe, went to about six different specialists over the course of six months or so, maybe even up closer to a year. And most of them just brushed it off as hormonal changes, kind of that time as you're getting a little bit older. Finally, after quite some time, we found um, an endocrinologist who diagnosed me. And at that time, I also was diagnosed with anemia. So there's a lot going on. Um, but in no way was it easy, and I'm sure really frustrating for my parents at the time especially, but it felt really good to finally have a diagnosis so that we could then start to tackle next steps. So for those who don't know, what does it physically feel like to have hypothyroidism? You know, it's hard. I think for most people, there are definitely general symptoms that a lot of people deal with. I think the hard thing is a lot of hypothyroidism is very much like an invisible illness. And so for everyone, it's different. For me, um, mentally, it was really frustrating and exhausting. Physically, it just felt like everything feels off. Even now, um, there's times where I'm so in tune with my body at this point, I know, but there's things where like you would sleep nine or 10 hours, which you would imagine you'd wake up feeling ready to take on your day, but you would still feel exhausted. And so that for me was the hardest thing was constantly feeling like 
there was something wrong, but I couldn't really figure out how to make it better, how to feel more energized or how to stop my hair from falling out and really address any of those symptoms. What's the most difficult thing about having hypothyroidism? For me, I believe that the most difficult thing at this point really is constantly having to check in and get blood work done still, knowing that like our hormones are always changing and my body's always changing. So I really have to be mindful of not only what I'm putting in my body and how I'm treating my body, but just how I'm feeling because it does change. And so over the course of the year, my medication has changed numerous times um, to really be able to find that balance. So it's really exciting when you feel in balance and your blood work comes back great. Um, but then knowing that like in six months, all of a sudden you might be feeling that severe fatigue again and having to readdress it and go back and adjust that medication and then wait for it to kick in the right way. Like that to me, I think is probably the hardest part. Now, I know fitness is such a big part of your life. How do you stay fit while having a condition that affects the way that your body works and feels? For a long time, um, especially during college and right after, I really used hypothyroidism and having it as a crutch and almost as an excuse to not take better care of my body because I felt like, okay, well, I'm going to struggle to lose weight. I'm going to gain weight really fast. I'm going to always have constipation, all these other issues. So like, who cares? And I found that although there were days that I felt completely unmotivated, completely exhausted, when I did finally start consistently moving my body, and for me, that started with like 10 minutes a day, that really allowed me to start to realize that that movement and that consistency actually gave me more energy and made me feel better. And when I started making changes to my nutrition and eating more nutritious foods and cutting out a lot of the processed things and other foods that can be like triggers for some of the side effects or symptoms of hypothyroidism, I started feeling better and I became a little bit addicted, I guess, to that feeling good because I've spent the majority of my life not feeling good. And it's kind of just expanded from there to the point where I lost 45 pounds, became a certified personal trainer, group fitness instructor, sports nutrition specialist, just because I fell in love with that feeling and realizing that even with hypothyroidism, I could function and live a pretty normal, healthy life. You just spoke about your diet, your exercising, and in combination with a medication. How do you manage your hypothyroidism? Yeah, so, I mean, it really is those things. So I still get my blood work checked about every six months to kind of see how I'm doing and where my levels are at. Um, the other part is consistent exercise, but listening to my body, because sometimes those really intense workouts feel amazing, and sometimes they don't. And so just knowing that it's okay to adjust and modify and like really focus on what things do make me feel good. And then nutrition, that's something that growing up with all the doctors I went to all those years, no one ever talked about it. And so as I grew up and as I started doing my own research and now like as a career, as a health and fitness professional, I've learned so much about it. So being able to manage my hypothyroidism like really comes down so much for me for nutrition and what I'm putting in my body and how those different foods impact my metabolism, my energy levels, and generally like how I feel. Is there anything else you'd like to mention to someone who might suspect they have hypothyroidism? I think the most important thing is obviously finding a doctor, going to a specialist if you're able to, going to an endocrinologist versus just uh, your regular doctor, like someone who specializes, it can really better diagnose that. If you feel off in any way, go get checked because maybe it's hypothyroidism or maybe it's something else. But if you're not feeling like you're able to function at your optimal level and you're doing all the other things that should allow you to, staying healthy, eating well, moving your body, uh, I think a lot of people tend to ignore it. So making sure that you take that step is really important. Is there anything else you'd like people to know? I think for me, um, especially like in my career in the space I'm in now and working with hundreds of thousands of women every day that I get to talk to, is really just knowing like there is hope and it's, it's not normal to feel those things all the time. Like, yes, of course our bodies change. And so there might be periods of time where you feel different, but, but knowing that there is 
a place for you to live a healthy, happy, balanced life, even with hypothyroidism and having a healthy weight is a possibility even with it. Yes, things are going to be a little bit harder. They just are for us, but um, hopefully I'm living proof that <laughs> those things can change and you can find that balance and that health for yourself. Like she said, in general, hypothyroidism is a very treatable condition. It can be controlled with regular medications and follow-up appointments with your healthcare provider. If you guys at home have any questions about the thyroid or health and medicine in general, drop them in the comments. Like and subscribe so you can catch every episode of the TMI Show. Thanks for watching. See you next time.